opportunity to talk. Um, uh, today about mainly based on approaches for fractures tonight. I confess that when I agreed to make this talk, I, uh, I should have probably uh, had this be the title because I think we realized that uh, mainly based it has to be put in perspective here. We're, we're not talking about um, robotic surgery and patients that are going on the same day. Patients are injured, and uh, what we're really trying to do is improve the outcomes through sort of thoughtful application of, of these approaches. I am a paid consultant razor care. We talked about that today um, earlier, and uh, Medtronic, although uh, only for bronchoscopy. So we talked about the fact that root factors are common and painful. This is, I think, the same slide you saw earlier. And I don't think that surprises anyone. Uh, Larry showed me a, a, a photograph he took yesterday that looks a lot like this. And um, there's massive dissections required for these uh, enormous uh, flail chests. And uh, it's not surprising that patients have pain afterwards. I'd like to, to think that the pain is not only proportional to their injury, but also probably to the extent of surgery we offer them. And this is part of the double-edged sword, and I think partially why rib fracture fixation may not have been um, something that everyone uh, agrees to, or, or conceptually that many providers don't agree to. The current strategies for root fixation, I think, is uh, that faster, and he said 24 in the paper, but 48 today, um, repair is better. <coughs> Regional anesthesia, we know that epidural is beneficial relative to some other regional approaches. And maybe some other regional uh, approaches have benefit as well, as I alluded to earlier today. Um, I believe a multiple sparing approach is beneficial, and I think this is shared by some providers um, in um, Salt Lake City. And uh, maybe perhaps the traditional approach is what you see here. There's some fractures under here. This is the oscillatory triangle. Here they are just uh, bogeying through muscle. And, um, I'd like to think that these same fractures could be approached in a, in a muscle sparing way uh, by using the oscillatory triangle in some fashion to get down there. Um, even though the data for uh, muscle sparing approaches is lacking in this field, there are some corollaries um, in, the, uh, in the lung cancer resection cohorts. And I, I know this data has problems, so I, I present it with reservations. But to say that, um, we know VATS is better than thoracotomy uh, in terms of recovery, in terms of length to stay. There are some data that muscle sparing approaches to uh, thoracotomy are better than non-muscle sparing. And muscle sparing um, approaches may have better lung and muscular function uh, relative to, to non-muscle sparing approaches. What, in my mind, are goals of a minimally basic root fracture repair? Well, first of all, you have to repair the injury correctly and safely. I think that's all of our uh, first priorities. But really, we should minimize the incision in my mind. Muscle is my goal. We should shorten the duration of surgery if possible. But really, I think this is not really represented. Is making surgery easier on the surgeon? Someone once told me that surgery, the amount of pain in an operation is constant, and the pain is either transferred to the patient or the surgeon. Um, so I think we should try to potentially make these things easier on surgeons. I think the first strategy for that is exposure. Um, exposure to these areas are difficult. We saw the use of the rule track here uh, for elevation of the sternum and pectus surgery. This is a new device by Zimmer Biomet called Walter, which is a similar electromechanical sort of robotic device. And I use this for my non-invasive bird fracture repairs. Uh, so here's the, uh, a little hard to see in this projection, the rule track uh, using a sternal retractor uh, to expose to the oscillatory triangle. And here I am using a VAT scope to see the refractors on the screen in front of me. Um, but elevating the scapula in this way uh, saves an assistant from crushing their arm through the exposure, allows me to get a screwdriver in position to make the repair, and facilitates repair through uh, this oscillatory triangle approach. Here's, uh, uh, obviously I can't use this mechanical screwdriver with one hand, but, but the way a procedure would work through a small incision like this with the uh, scapula tractor attached to the rule track to elevate the scapula to have both thoracoscopic, although extra thoracic visualization, and a uh, right angle screwdriver here. And this is a, a similar setup to a patient um, for an anterior approach. Uh, so uh, scapula's back there, this is uh, an arm here. Uh, a smaller incision, this is just for a two rib repair using the non meter tractor attached to the rule track in the same way. The rule track is an excellent device because it can be used in so many different ways. Um, and this is a this is a four a four rib repair through a four centimeter. So uh, three different 
So I think plate bending is actually harder than we think it is. Uh, and uh, plate bending is not is not trivial. Uh, getting a plate designed well, I think, improves your reputation, and it's something that takes time. Uh, we use in our institution uh, 3D printing here to generate uh, a model of the injury. Uh, in silico model of the injury, we created a corrected uh, set of anatomies. This was turned into an STL file that we heard about earlier, with these little red lines uh, denoting fracture formation, and ultimately printed a model of the chest wall. This was used to prevent plates for a subscapular location. Each plate was numbered with a rib fracture that it was uh, akin to, and then they were implanted, uh, actually for relatively big incision here, um, uh, with really perfect fit. That saved the step of the operation. It saves some difficulty with um, uh, timing of the operation. And there is data on another slide set, unfortunately. Uh, it just got presented uh, two weeks ago. There is a, um, a Chinese group who uh, did 48 consecutive patients with 3D printing. Uh, so they 3D printed the chest wall. Their chest uh, walls then uh, had pre shaped plates. Uh, in that group, they had shorter incisions uh, and shorter length of operations per rib fix uh, using this technique. Um, they don't comment much on the cost of the operation, but having, I think, an in house printer and in house expertise allowed them to do this. Uh, in a relatively large set of patients uh, uh, successfully. Ultimately, uh, I think, and some of you may have seen this device downstairs, uh, is the advantage rib technique. Um, this is a device, there's a little one minute video here. Uh, so this is their device, uh, and I've used it, um, where you sort of elevate the fractures, cross drill the ribs, um, uh, which then is used to feed uh, some plastic tubes uh, intrathoracic. So this is a thoracoscopic visualization. These tubes are used to guide uh, wires from intra to extra thoracic. And they are falling out. Um, and then those wires are used to uh, introduce the plates uh, into the patient. And then that's uh, used uh, to elevate the, elevate the fractures, reduce the fractures, and seat the plates. The wires are then used to guide screws to fix the plates from extra thoracic. The plates are secured intrathoracic, and then the guide wires disappear. Um, I have used this. Um, and there is my name. Uh, so this is a guy who I saw uh, about a month ago. He had um, these fractures here uh, uh, in a posterior setting. The scapula is segmented here, so you can see it. Um, we used a, a muscle sparing approach through the uh, oscillatory triangle in place of four plates. Uh, and truthfully, it's, it's very clever. I would say that uh, there is uh, an advantage to uh, incision size. There is an advantage in terms of the need for retraction. Um, there is uh, thoracoscopic expertise required, but ultimately, uh, I've had some initial and anecdotal success with this. So, it, in sort of conclusion, taking a step back, uh, as studies like Fred's and the, and the studies that are coming out of the Chest Wall Injury Society demonstrate broader benefits of surgical stabilization, this concept of someone coming to the ER with a fracture or going straight to the OR. I think we need to be cognizant of the fact that the current technologies available to repair those fractures need to be adjusted to that broader cohort. We're not dealing with vented patients who have frail chests and are saving their lives. We're trying to do a more nuanced or finesse approach to their care to say, we need to get people back in the workforce. The concept of being off work for 70 days doesn't work anymore. Uh, you, you can't just have a rib fracture and hand someone a script for 250 uh, oxycodone and say I'll see you in four weeks, um, that those strategies are gone. And so in that regard, I believe the this approach to organization is appropriate, and obviously these are an evolution. For me, it involves uh, better attraction, uh, better planning, and then also working with systems uh, to develop these approaches that can be truly innovative, such as the SIG system. Ultimately, though, I think we still need provider-level acceptance. Um, 
I was talking to someone who said, please don't take away virtualization. It's the last open operation. Right? It's the last open operation. Please don't take it away from me. And I don't want to be that guy that takes it away, but in some ways I think we need to. We need to take away the concept that we're allowed to let it be a big operation. And, uh, and so I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so we'll take questions and do that again. Thank you.